This video is going to talk about complex numbers, how to simplify them, how to work with them, how to rationalize with them, lots of how-tos. Uh, I'm actually going to break this up into two videos. I'm going to do the first one is just a very simple introduction to the um, values of i, and there technically is just one i value, but then there's also i squared, i cubed. And we're going to simplify problem number one, just a through d. Then the next video I'll do, we'll have E through H, we'll multiply and rationalize, and then also I and J and simplify uh, and solve those. So the first thing we need to know is a complex number. Complex numbers are defined as the square root of negative 1 is equal to I. These are your imaginary numbers. Uh, imaginary numbers are useful, they're fabulous, they're wonderful numbers, you just can't draw them on the real number line. Um, so when you graph something and you're used to putting a little number, little points on the number line or a coordinate grid, uh, our normal coordinate grids and our normal number lines don't accommodate uh, imaginaries. Um, however, there are some other values that we want to pay attention to. Um, when we talk about I squared, and we want to know what that is equal to. Well, if I is the square root of negative 1, and we square that, square and square root cancel each other out, and so I, I don't know why I'm writing T, let's try that again, um, I squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, that is highly important to know. Uh, let's see, if we talk about I to the third power, well, i to the third power could be written as i times i squared. Well, i is the square root of negative 1 or just i, and i squared is negative 1. So it's kind of weird, but i to the third power is equal to negative i. Okay? And last but not least is i to the fourth power. i to the fourth power is basically, you could rewrite this as i squared times i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1. Another i squared is negative 1. So i to the fourth power is equal to a positive 1. All right. So off to the side here, I'm just going to list them out in order. So you know that i is i. We had defined this as the square root of negative 1. Okay, but i is i. i squared is equal to negative 1, i cubed is equal to negative i, and i to the fourth is equal to positive 1. Now, the interesting thing that will happen here with the values of i is they actually restart, okay? So if you're asked to find, let's say, i to the seventh, you literally can just count this cycle and go back to the beginning. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. i to the 7th is the exact same thing as i to the 3rd, which would be equal to negative i. So it's kind of an interesting cycle that happens. Um, I've oftentimes referred to it as the i cycle because it just keeps literally cycling through those uh, four values. i, negative 1, negative i, positive 1. So let's use some of these values and simplify this top row. All right, so we've got the square root of negative 9. Well, we could rewrite this as negative 1 times, negative, uh, times the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is just 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So that's how you're simplifying your complex uh, imaginary numbers. You've seen this a little bit when we started talking about quadratic and the fact that not all answers are real, so it kind of comes into play there. Uh, part B, I'm going to break this up in three different ways. I'm going to pull out the negative 1. I am also then going to break up 20 into root 4 times root 5. So let's see. I'm going to pull the perfect square first, okay? And in this case, the square root of 4 is just 2. We've got root 5, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. Now, I mentioned this in, I don't know which video it was, something with the quadratic equations. Um, if you have a bad habit of writing this uh, 
square root sign very long, be careful that your i does not fall underneath it because, well, the square root of i is different than i. So just be aware of that. All right, uh, part C, we've got the square root of negative 72. So let's see if we can break out the negative 1. We can also break up 72 in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm going to try and go for the largest. So I'm going to go ahead and use 36 and 2. Uh, so the perfect square that I'm dealing with here is this square root of 36. So that's going to turn into 6, root 2, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. So that's the mathematical convention. You always put the uh, i at the end. Um, now, part D, oftentimes students will get confused with this one because they say, oh, we can multiply negative 16 times negative 9. Yes and no, <laughs> all right? What you want to do first is actually simplify each of the um, roots first and then multiply. So think of these like parentheses. You want to do what's inside the parentheses first. So the square root of negative 16 is 4i. The square root of negative 9 is 3i. So when we multiply these together, we would get 12i squared. And using our little i cycle list, i squared is negative 1. So 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. So just be careful when you have um, negative uh, radicals that have negatives in them being multiplied together because they don't always do what you think they should. All right, so this is going to be the end of the first video. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about the imaginary numbers that I've just been talking about, send me an email. I will have a second video that will go through E through J um, and actually do some multiplication and rationalization with those.